the, the, the study uh, comes from we try, when we try to answer this question how can we model the behavior of very coarse granular materials such as rock shield for example but they are also of course very coarse materials and this is the, pro the problem is that the REV of such materials is so big that they cannot be tested in the laboratory. So we don't have test results. So we have to extrapolate somehow the behavior of this uh, kind of materials. For example, we could uh, use the results obtain on smaller grain size distributions. No? We take homostatic grain size distribution, smaller grain size distribution. Yeah? So we assume that this is a field gradation, and we can maybe in the laboratory test the homostatic gradation, but with smaller sizes. Can we do that? Well, this has been done yeah, quite a long time ago, and for example here you have the results, one of the first results obtained on this kind of uh, study by uh, Marachi and, and, and co-workers in, in, uh, at the University of California. And what they show is the following. Uh, they, they concentrate here on the peak friction angle. And they show that the peak friction angle decreases with the increase of cell pressure. Well, that is a well-known result. But also that the peak friction angle decreases with the increase of particle size. Huh? They work on, diff on homostatic gradation, and it shows that, in fact, the, the small uh, uh, samples had higher strength than the big samples. Okay. At the same time, they show that if we look at the breakage of grains during this, uh, this is this word, grain triaxial test, they show that the grain breakage, uh, uh, given here by uh, index, I'm not going to discuss this index, it's not very, that important. Increase with the cell pressure, that's also something which is quite obvious, but also increase with, uh, uh, increases with the increase of grain size. Okay, and these two aspects are linked. And here you have another example huh, of uh, the test performed later on by Lee, and with also initially parallel uh, homostatic grain size distribution and on the results of drain triaxial test, they show that on very coarse material we have much more uh, grain rupture than in small size, uh, uh, small gra size grain materials. And this has also been studied quite a, a long time ago, uh, uh, for example here by Marshall, almost at the same time that Marachi, that was when they were building uh, very big uh, uh, bankman dams, uh, say Rockfield dams at the time, and uh, Marshall shows that uh, when you increase the size of your grain here, uh, this is a crushing test, you can this shows that uh, the uh, strength of the grain decreases when you increase its size. Okay, so this is the, the basic results. Now, the idea is to try to introduce these aspects in a constitutive model. And we are going to do that in two steps. First steps, we are going to take into account the influence of the grain breakage. And then, we are going to introduce the grain size effect inside the model. So let's start with the first point. Well, if we look at uh, some results again, this is on Anstein Sand, it was performed by Lelon in uh, Grenoble quite a long time ago or so. You can see that systematically you have an increase of the coefficient of uniformity here given by the ratio between D60 and D10. And if you look at all the evolution of the grain size distribution, if there is grain breakage, you find that the D60 over D10 increases. And what is the consequence on the overall behavior of the specimen? Well, you can show that if you increase the, the university, uh, coefficient of, uh, university, uh, of uh, the D60 over D10, in fact, there's a shift downwards of the critical state line in the E log P prime plane. Okay, this has also some uh, results obtained a long time ago. What, are, 
what, what is the consequence on the behavior of the material? Uh, let's look at some results on loose or dense assemblies. If there is no grain uh, rupture, well, the material will slowly go down here for loose structure to join the kicker state. And the, and the loose structure is a contracting structure, so you have a decrease in void ratio. On the contrary, if you have a dense material, you, the mat dense material is a uh, dilatant material, and you will have an increase on the void ratio against without rupture. If you have rupture now, what's happening? Well, on the loose structure, the, 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 in origin, the initial critical state line will sh be shifted down, huh? and so you will increase the contractancy of the material. Huh? You can increase it more or less according to the amount of grain rupture. Same thing with dense matter, uh, with a dense assembly. What's going to happen in that case? That we, you will reduce the latency of this dense uh, assembly. And even you can you can even if there's a large amount of grain structure, go from a dilatant behavior to a contracting behavior. So this is the main result concerning the influence of the grain breakage. And here you have some results, also by Lelon, uh, on Ostensan, uh, performed at quite high uh, confining pressure, up to four, 14 uh, megapascal. And you can see that the material, so originally dilatant, becomes more and more contractant uh, when you increase the confining pressure. And this is due to the uh, grain breakage, uh, which leads to the to the shift of the critical state and so the increase here of the contractancy. Okay, so how can we introduce that into our constitutive model? I'm not going to discuss uh, in detail the, the model uh, we, we, we chose. But in fact, this can be introduced in the same way in any kind of critical state-based model. So the model by itself is not is not important in this in this uh, presentation. So we use uh, the the breakage index defined by uh, Ardin and then modified by NF. And you have here the initial grain size distribution. Here the ultimate distribution and the ultimate distribution is usually considered as a fractal distribution. And this are the works of Coop and all. And so the, and this is the grain size distribution at a given point of the loading. So we can define the package index as a ratio between this uh, surface and the overall surface, which is here. So in fact, the package index with, given by NF will move from 0 to 1. And this is a very practical way of using this package index. And NF proposed also an evolution of the uh, uh, grain size distribution linked to the evolution of this package index. So we use this expression. And then we have to link this package index to the loading condition. And then we did that by finding, trying to find a relation between this package index and the plastic work during, I said, put here traction loading, but it could be any kind of loading, let's say during loading. And we came out with a relation, which is given here. And this relation link the uh, package index to the plastic work during loading by a constant uh, uh, material parameter here, which is here, that you can calibrate. And at the same time, we can relate the evolution, the shifting of the critical state to the plastic work. So here you have some examples uh, to calibrate the, the, this, this relation. Here you have some results performed by Yamamuro and Lade. And what was interesting is this series of tests is that it had different loading conditions, drain compression, drain extension, and drain compression and drain extension. And we could fit, in fact, very well this, this relation and determine the uh, constant, the material parameter key. And you can see here the result on the stress strain curve for this value of the uh, parameter here. 
with a breakage and with all the values of this uh, constant, a Taylor constant. And you can see that what we obtain by fitting the, the previous curve give quite interesting results for the stress strain curve as well as for the volume change. Mm -hmm. With a breakage, the material will be dilated. With a breakage, it becomes quite contracted. Okay, at the same time, using the, the, the work of ENAV, we can uh, uh, compute the uh, grain size dis distribution evolution. Uh, here you have the experimental result, and here you have the simulation. The blue, the blue line corresponding to the ultimate grain size distribution considered here in this study as a fractal. Okay, now this is the first part, so introducing the effect of grain breakage inside a, a, a model. Now we have to introduce the second aspect, which is the size effect. Uh, so we first start from the size effect of the of a, on an individual individual grain, and we can use, for example, Weber's theory for brittle materials. We can use also Marshall theory. Uh, fitting the results I've shown you before. And we can show, it's easy to, to, to show that in fact these two uh, 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 theories lead to the same uh, uh, final result and you can get the relation between lambda for in the Marshall theory and M in Weber's, uh, being the Weber's models. Okay, we, we uh, modified a little bit this approach by extending uh, Weber's theory uh, taking this representation, where we have not only M, but also uh, uh, an index ND, which uh, uh, calibrates the size effect, uh, D over D0 being, in fact, the, the size ratio. And uh, uh, according to some uh, previous studies by, for example, Bazant and Planas, ND can take different values from 1 to 3 according to the way uh, the, 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 the brittle material is going to break. Hmm? Uh, it could be a, uh, on the surface, it could be uh, splitting uh, inside the, the, the volume. So according to, to, the, um, to the kind of grain breakage we obtain, can, kind of a rupture, ND could take different value. So ND has to be calibrated also. And uh, from, from this expression, we can say that the uh, stress uh, at failure for an individual grain is a function of a given dimension of the grain multiplied uh, to the power minus nd over m. And in fact, we will work not on nd and m, and we will work, we will work on the ratio nd over m, because it's the only uh, uh, thing we need to, to calibrate our size effect. Okay, so now, starting from there, if an identical survivor probability is assumed for two grains under compression of characteristic sizes D1 and D, D, D2. We have this relation uh, between the stress, the strength of these two grains, and here we have the size uh, index, uh, size effect index. Well, Jager proposed that uh, the, the, the stress on, on the grain is proportional to the force applied divided by uh, the uh, characteristic uh, dimension, uh, the, uh, the square of the characteristic dimension. So we can go from here to here. And here we have the local forces. We will give the same uh, uh, pro pro uh, survival probability for uh, two grains uh, uh, of different sizes. OK, this is for individual grains. Now we have to go to uh, gun assembly. Okay, so we will do that. And so we will take two granular assemblies, homothetic gradation. Huh? So this is assembly G2 is homothetic to assembly G1. Uh, and we want to obtain the same amount of particle breakage for the two assemblies. In that case, the contact forces on two grains have to be in this relation as we have shown before. Okay? So, if we ha want to have the same amount of grain package, we need to have this relation between the local forces. If we do so, now we can go to the stress applied on the, at the assembly scale, in 
introducing, so this is a classical relation between stress and local uh, force, okay? Here, the branch lengths are linked by the uh, size ratio D2 over D1, and the volume uh, of the incident also by this relation, D1, D2 over D1 to the power 3. Okay, so same amount of grain breakage implies what for these two assemblies? It implies that, in fact, the forces have in, are in this uh, uh, the local forces are in this relation, and then, therefore, that the stress applied on the granular assembly uh, G1 and G2 are for, uh, fulfills this relation. Okay, and this is sigma in G1. So, in fact, sigma, sigma the stress uh, state in G2, is equal to the stress state, state, uh, stress state in G1 multiplied by this size effect here. And you can see that the size effect is given by this ratio minus nd over m. Huh? So, we just need to calibrate this, this ratio. Okay, so now we combine the two aspects, uh, the breakage uh, 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 influence and the size effect, and we do that by the plastic works we have defined before, uh, and we say that the plastic works necessary to create the same amount of grain breakage in matter G1 and G2 along the same loading path is are linked by, the, by this relation, yeah, which is directly derived from the previous relation between the stresses applied on G1 and G2. Okay, and as a consequence, the material constant uh, in this relation between the uh, plastic work and the uh, breakage index are linked by a similar relation, which is here. So if we are able to uh, uh, determine the, the material constant in the small assembly, uh, and we are able to determine the ratio here, which gives the size effect. In that case, we can uh, obtain the uh, material constant for a very coarse uh, granular materials. And so I show you, just to finish, some, some example. Hmm? Okay, oh, uh, yes, uh, again, something I, I want to precise is this assumption is reasonable if material G1 and G2 are made of the same grains, of course, huh? having similar shapes, huh? everything has to similar shapes for different sizes and homothetic grain size distribution. Huh? You, 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 you need to be restricted to, this, to, to, to all these, these, these elements. Huh? If these elements are not fulfilled, if one of these elements is not fulfilled, uh, we're not sure we can apply this approach. Okay, so let's go back to Marachi, and we chose the, the example of uh, um, uh, exa um, of uh, results he published on a, a material called pyramid dam material. Um, so here you have he, he tested these three gradations here in the laboratory, and here is the field gradation, the, the material used to build the dam. Okay, so we are going to. Uh, uh, determine our uh, material parameters using these three series of tests, and we are going to predict, in fact, the behavior of the material of the dam. So here you have the results. So this is, this result, uh, the, the uh, Marashi uh, performed test, threshold, drain threshold test at different confining pressures. Here you have smaller one, a bigger one, and much, much bigger ones. And of course, when you have a smaller, uh, when you increase the confining pressure, you increase the amount of, of grain breakage, the, 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 the result uh, becomes much more apart. Huh? They, are, they are quite close for uh, lower confining pressure and they become really different when you increase the, the confining pressure due to the uh, increase in the amount of, of grain breakage. And in red here, you have the <laughs> assumed behavior <laughs> of uh, the uh, material used use for the dam, uh, the very coarse uh, granular materials. Mm -hmm. And you can see that, uh, especially at very high confining pressure, the, the behavior can be quite different from 
the behavior of the, mat the small material tested with uh, uh, made of small grains. Okay, at the same time, we could uh, look at the evolution of the grain size distribution. So here you have the experiments, here you have the simulation for, again, the uh, experiments of three different uh, grain size distribution. For the simulation, the, the, the same uh, uh, grain size distribution plus the field gradation, in, in, again, in, in red here. And you can see that, of course, when you increase the confining pressure, again, you, know, you, are, you are develop more and more grain breakage. And you can see that the results we obtain by simulation are quite similar to what has been observed um, measured by Marachi. And we go back, we go to the highest confining pressure. Here you have a very large amount of current breakage, both for experiments and simulations. Okay, and that's all my conclusion. Uh, so what we can conclude is size effect in granular materials is linked to the size effect at the grain scale. It, it is induced mainly by grain breakage. Uh, grain breakage in granular assemblies leads to a decrease of the peak strength and of the stiffness, as we have seen in the results. And we propose a novel approach uh, to incorporating grain breakage and size effect within constitutive equation. And again, this constitutive equation quite can be different. Huh? The, only, the only requirement is for the mod constitutive model, uh, well, it has to be an aristoplastic model if you want to compute the plastic work, but uh, the, the equation can be quite different. It has to have the critical state incorporated inside the model. That's the only requirement we have. Otherwise, the uh, I think there is no uh, limitation to, for, for, for any uh, elastoplastic model. No? And so, so we, ha we, we developed one, one, speci one specific model, but, uh, and we can, we assure you that we can then estimate uh, um, the mechanical behavior, mechanical behavior of very coarse granular materials, such as Oakfield, even if we don't have uh, test results uh, uh, for materials of this size. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I think people are eager to go to, <laughs> to lunch. Uh, the question is uh, the possible extension to, uh, to include saturation or pressure in the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, that, that's, that's the next step that we want to do because uh, we know uh, that uh, the, 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 the entrance of water is quite significant on the behavior of these very coarse granular materials. In fact, when you wet uh, your, your specimen, you have more grain breakage than for dry specimen. So, so the idea is, yes, to, to, to introduce th this notion, uh, this is, will be the next step. Uh, of, uh, yeah, uh, this can be added to make some clarification on purely cross conflict approach without uh, introducing the very material and that the final part of the problem to go into some. Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, oh, yeah. The idea was to try to, to understand the physics uh, which was behind uh, and we have the feelings that we understand this, this physics, so we want to introduce this physics in, 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 into the, the modeling, you know. Uh, so, uh, but of course, it's, you, can, you can escape all that and propose something which is more uh, direct than what we have been doing.